fabulous this Sunday afternoon. I'm getting ready for evening service, but I wanted to come and love on you guys with this real quick. I'm back in the Smith Wigglesworth on the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we're going to talk about glory and virtue. He says, I want you to see these two words that are closely connected, glory and virtue. He says, they are beautiful words and full of blessings for us this moment. He said, now in 2 Peter 1 and 3, it says, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Oh my God, he's called us by glory and virtue. Praise God. Okay, listen to this. He said, um, people have a great misunderstanding about glory. He says, though they often use the word. There are three kinds that ought to take place at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was necessary that the movement of the mighty rushing wind was made manifest in the upper room and that the disciples were clothed with tongues of fire. Acts 2, 1 through 4. Oh, I would have loved to have seen it just to have been there. Okay, listen. He says, it was also necessary that they receive not only the fire, but also the rushing wind, the personality of the spirit in the wind. The manifestation of the glory is in the wind or the breath of God, the Ruah. The inward man receives the Holy Spirit instantly with great joy and blessedness. He cannot express it. Then the power of the spirit, the breath of God, the Ruah, takes it says, takes of the things of Jesus, John 16, 14, and 15, and sends forth as a river of utterance of the Spirit. Oh, it says again, the whole body is filled with joy, sometimes so in, inexpressible, and the joy is thrown on the canvas of the mind. The canvas of the mind has great power to move the operation of the tongue to bring out the very depths of the inward heart's power love and joy to us, which also deep calleth unto deep. It says by the same process, the spirit, which is the breath of the breath of God. Okay. Brings forth the manifestation of the glory. Oh, you guys, this is so good and rich. Oh, it says sometimes people wonder why it is that the Holy spirit is always expressing himself in words. It cannot be otherwise. Who could, it says you could not understand it. Otherwise it says, you cannot understand God by shakings, and yet shakings may be in perfect order sometimes. But you can always tell when the Spirit moves and brings forth the utterances. It says there are always the utterances that magnify God. The Holy Spirit has a perfect plan. He comes right through every man who is so filled and brings divine utterances so that we may understand what the mind of the Lord is. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Okay, listen. Psalm 16 and 9 says, Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. It says, Something that made the rejoicing bring forth the glory. It was because his heart was glad. You guys, listen to this. Which the joy of the Lord is our strength. Listen to this. Psalms 108 and 1. Oh, God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. You see, when the body is filled with the power of God, then the only thing that can express the glory is the tongue. Oh, glory to God. Glory is presence, and the presence always comes by the tongue, which brings forth the revelations of God. Acts 2, 25 and 26 says, For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. It said, therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Okay, listen, God first brings his power into us. Then he gives us verbal expressions by the same spirit, the outward manifestation of what is within us. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12 and 34. Okay, listen, Virtue has to be transmitted and the glory has to be expressed. Therefore, by feeling us with the Holy Spirit, God has brought into us his glory. Guys, listen to that. Okay. By God, by, <clears throat> it says, therefore, by feeling us with the Holy Spirit, God has brought into us his glory. I don't know if that gets you guys like it got me when I first read this, but oh my God, he is so awesome. Jesus, you are so awesome. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Guys, listen. Okay, he said, oh, I have to read that again. Therefore, by filling us with the Holy Spirit, God has brought into us his glory, this glory, so that out of us may come forth the glory. The Holy Spirit understands everything. 
Christ has in his glory and brings through the heart of man God's latest thoughts. Praise God. See, people want to think that, you know, moving in the gifts of the Spirit and all this stuff, they use it for such wrong reasons. And, and I'm talking people that are in the church as a whole. They use this and it grieves the Holy Spirit. They're using it for selfish gain. They're using it to make money and almost prostitute the move of God. But you guys, when we are filled with the Spirit of God, first and foremost, we are surrendered and yielded and submitted to His Lordship. And we are walking in sync with His Spirit. It's one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's the voice of God, the Holy Spirit. And it's us flowing in that divine order. And it's for His glory to be seen, not for us. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Okay, listen to this. <clears throat> the world's needs, our manifestations, revivals, and all conditions are first settled in heaven, then worked out on the earth. We must be in touch with God Almighty in order to bring out on the face of the earth all the things that God has in heaven. Oh, God, let your will be done, Lord Jesus. Bring heaven to earth, Jesus, through us. Yes, God, do it through us, Jesus. So this, and this is ideal for us. And many, or excuse me, and may God help us not to forsake the reality of a holy communion with him, <clears throat> of entering into a private place of prayer so that publicly he may manifest his glory. Guys, if we don't go in first, we can't go out. I mean, yeah, we could operate in the flesh, but if we're going to operate in the power and the glory and the anointing of God, we have to be saturated with his presence and the weight of his glory on us. That we're walking in the spirit and walking it out. Praise God. Okay, listen. It says, we must see the face of the Lord and understand his workings. These are all things that God says said to him. Talking about Smith Wigglesworth. He said, um, said to him, he said, it does not matter what people say. He said, I have been face to face with face to face with some of the most trying moments of men's lives and times when it made all the difference if I kept the vision and held fast to what God had said. A man must have immovable faith. I know that's right. And the voice of God must mean more to him than what he sees, feels, or what people say. I know that's right, guys. We when God gives us a word or a promise, doesn't matter what it is or how crazy it sounds, you do not move off of that word. You stand strong and you stand steadfast on that word. Praise God. He says, he must have an originality born in heaven, transmitted or expressed in some way. We must bring heaven to earth. Second Peter 1 and 3 says, his divine power has given to us all things, all things that pertain to a life to life and a godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. It is life to us. It is like the breath. It moves us. He said, I must live in this grace, his divine power. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It says through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. Praise God. It says, we cannot get away from him. He is the center of all things. He moves the earth and transforms beings. He can live in every mind and plan every thought. Oh, he is there all the time. Jehovah Shammah. Okay. Says you will find that Paul was full of the might of the spirit breathing through him. And yet he came to a place where he felt he must stop for there are greater things than he could utter even by prayer. When the almighty breathes through the human soul. This is what uh, Paul said in Ephesians uh, verse three, the end of it. He says his being his being able to do all things exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. The, he says, the Holy Spirit gave these words of grandeur to stir our hearts and to move our affections, to transform us all together. God has never put anything up on a pole where we could not reach it. He is so wonderful. He has brought his plan down to man. And if we are prepared, oh, what he has for us. Glory be to God. It says, yet such divine nuggets of precious truth are held before our hearts that it makes us understand that there are yet heights and depths and lengths and breadths of the knowledge of God stored up for us. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Oh, hallelujah. It says, God is shaking the earth to its foundation and causing us to understand that there is a principle. I'm almost done. In the scripture that may bring 
to man freedom from the natural order and to bring him into a place of holiness, righteousness, and the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Philippians 4 and 7. And there is a place of that as we abide in him and as we walk in the spirit. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Listen, he says, how will I be able to get all these things that God has stored up for me? This is what he said, brother and sister, I know no other way but a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Psalms 51 and 17. He said, be definite in your seeking. God knows what you need. That one thing is for you this evening. As you guys listen to this, take this in your heart and listen. Set it in your minds that you will know the powers of the world to come. That heaven coming to earth and the power that God has for us, unlimited power, unlimited resources, the supernatural. Oh my God. Listen to this, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you for everyone. He didn't say some people. He said for everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, and it says, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. So if we ask, it will be given to us. If we seek, we will find. If we knock, it will be opened to us. He said, for everyone who asks, receives. And he who finds, or seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. I want to pray with you guys right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, I just come before you. Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. And I thank you for your unlimited resources and your unlimited power. God, I pray each and every person that is listening to the sound of the sound of my voice that you would reveal, reveal your awesome, mighty, glorious, victorious spirit to us. God, that you would reveal how awesome and powerful you are. God, pour into us as we make that choice to empty ourselves out. God, so we can have all of heaven poured into us. God, and that we may pour out on this world. God, I give you my hands. I give you my mouth. Lord, I give you my ears, my eyes, my hands, my feet, my heart, my tongue. God, my lips, may they sing the praises of you. God, consume every part of us, God. Lord, Holy Spirit, forgive us for ever grieving you in any way, shape, or form. May we be so careful with your presence and realize that you are holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is filled with your glory. You are great God, Jehovah. You are a mighty God. You are the Prince of Peace. You are our wonderful counselor. God, you are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. You are Jehovah Tishkenu, our righteousness. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God, I thank you and I praise you that there is no situation you cannot change. There is no circumstance you cannot intervene on. So right now, I pray for each and every person, God, that you will go into the crevices of their homes, of their situations, of their circumstances, God. God, I pray that they would open their hearts and cry out to you, God, and give they will, that they will give you access to their lives. And Holy Spirit, I pray when you're looking to and from and you're say, looking on your children saying, who can I pour into? That we would say, here I am, Lord, send me. Oh, God, here I am, Lord, I say, send me. Lord, we are ready, Jesus. We are ready, Lord. Continue to, to move in our hearts, God. Keep us humble before you. And God, keep us, Lord Jesus, in a place of, of humility all the days of our life, God. Lord, Keep us before you, God, desiring you, needing you, hungry for you, God, hungering for righteousness, for holiness and truth. Oh, God, move over this land of our nation. God, move over the White House, move over our legislator, our Congress. God, move over the schools and, Lord, of the marketplaces. God, move over every preacher, and Lord, every teacher, every minister, over every evangelist that stands and holds their hand to the plow, God, to speak the word of God. May they speak the word of truth. God, may they speak the word of truth and they be an obedient vessel. Whatever you say to say, they'll say, and God, they'll do it with boldness in Jesus name In Jesus name be glorified. 
You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. I pray that your hearts are stirred. I pray that you hunger for him like you never have before. God is up to something and he is going to use us. We are his hands and his feet. We are his voice. So be ready in Jesus name.